Untold Physio Stories is part of the all-new PT Podcast Network. Find a new favorite podcast by an amazing PT content creator at ptpodcastnetwork.com. The future of medical documentation is here, and it's revolutionizing the way we record patient visits. Introducing Comprehend PT, the groundbreaking HIPAA-compliant AI scribe designed specifically for physical therapists. Imagine a world with a dialogue between PTs and patients is interpreted by AI into precise, real-time medical notes without lifting a pen or tapping a keyboard. Comprehend PT does just that, allowing healthcare professionals to stay engaged with patients rather than buried in documentation. Boost your efficiency, reduce claim denials, and liberate yourself from the burdens of manual note-taking with Comprehend PT. Join the revolution now at ComprehendPT.com. Untold Physio Stories listeners get 50% off their first month with code MMT50, and there's a free trial available. Sign up now. I use it every day in the clinic for virtual and live visits. I just speak to the patient, and at the end, hit Comprehend, and a soap note's generated. I love it, and you will too. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with Modern Manual Therapy, Edge Mobility System, and Modern Rehab Mastery, our four-month online mentoring program. So I did a uh, 65-mile, three-day pilgrimage two weekends ago. Last year, I definitely was not prepared to walk 20 to 25 miles a day. We didn't have nearly enough electrolytes. I was dehydrated on the first day, and I barely felt like I could walk. Every single muscle in my body hurt. I thought, hey, I'm in good shape. I run. Uh, you know, I, I train regularly. This is just walking. Um, I realized that there's no amount of training you can do unless you are walking 20 to 25 miles a day on the same side of the road because you're not allowed to switch. Again, we're walking with between 700 and 900 other pilgrims. Um, and it's a very organized caravan that's that's over a mile, uh, half a mile long. There's no way you can train for that. And, you know, even running on the same side of the road eventually adds up. Imagine what it does when you're walking on the left side of the road for 20 miles. Your back ends up hurting. Your hip ends up hurting. I mean, I was surprised. My hip flexor hurt. My shoulders hurt. My everything hurt last year. So this year, we wanted to make it different. I, again, I didn't really train, but I made sure I got myself an amazing pair of shoes. They're somewhere out of uh, Columbus, Ohio, American company. They come with two pairs of memory foam insoles, the best pair of walking shoes I ever bought. I didn't even want to say it this year because the only thing that hurt was my right ankle, right around my sinus tarsi, and then eventually, like my lateral forefoot, it would hurt. The first two days, I was okay. I was able to run a lot. Every time you go to the bathroom, the pilgrims keep on marching on and on and on. And you either have to take a shuttle to catch up or you run. So I was feeling good and I was running to catch up the majority of the time. On day three, my ankle was, again, bothering me a bit, um, probably about five out of 10 by the end of day two, two, uh, two to three out of 10 and to day one. On the third day, which is the final day, um, I took a, a pretty long shuttle because shuttles would tend to be pretty full on the third day. I ended up sitting for maybe a little over 20 minutes and um, due to a lot of different unforeseen circumstances. When I got out of the shuttle, my ankle hurt probably about an 8 out of 10. I had noticed a little bit earlier that I was able to modulate a lot of this ankle pain uh, because it's in like the L5-S1 dermatome and if I walk more upright um, with an anterior tilt, that pain probably reduced maybe 25 to 50%. So I thought, oh, is it lumogenic or is it some sort of ankle issue? I also noticed that if I did ankle resets, uh, particularly um, lateral tibial glides, that that also felt a little bit better. Um, or if I did ankle dorsiflexion and eversion, that also felt better. But after, after the shuttle ride, I could barely walk. I mean, I tried running. I try because uh, sometimes when you use different muscles, you land in, you land in a different uh, foot strike pattern. It's actually easier after after doing all that walking. Um, so again, I just had to take a shuttle, but I, I was very prideful and I thought I really want to finish this pilgrimage since I was doing so well this year, much better than last year. So I did the stupid thing. I basically took eight 200 milligram ibuprofen, uh, numbed it all up and was able to finish really strong, was able to run at the end. 
um, after going to the bathroom. Um, and I, I just felt great. So the next couple of days were pretty rough. Again, just like as expected, I could barely walk. I took a couple of days off, super sore all over. But then when my body, the rest of my body, and particularly my legs started recovering, by Wednesday, I noticed that my pain in my ankle wasn't really getting better. It was actually getting worse. Every morning I would wake up, I would have severe pain in my fifth metatarsal. And I thought, oh man, do I test positive for the Ottawa foot and ankle rules? And the thing is that, I only tested positive for the one rule about not being able to weight bear without severe pain for more than a couple steps. I didn't have any ankle tenderness. Nowhere where it hurt in my fifth metatarsal or at the base of the fifth metatarsal was it tender to touch. Plus I noticed that I could modulate it with, um, with lumbar repeated motions, particularly side glides to that side. So I thought, okay, maybe in the back of my mind I'm giving a 50% chance of stress fracture. Another day goes by, I notice that if I put if um, an H-wave stim on my lumbar spine, that it actually modulates it. So I did that for a bit, and uh, it's kind of like a super fancy TENS unit if you um, that you cannot accommodate to, and you can turn it up all the way, and it doesn't cause a titanic contraction. So if you've never heard about that, uh, maybe doing a webinar on it sometime soon, because I really, really think it's, it's great. Um, and so I tried the next time the H wave on my calf and I thought, Hey, you know, maybe I'll use it with the ankle, um, to kind of flush out any swelling. There's a low mode and a high mode. The high mode is more of like a modulating tens. The low mode, uh, does really small, like ankle or I'm sorry, pumping contractions, very similar to using, uh, e stem with dry needling. You get those like little, little contractions that kind of like flushes out waste metabolites, etc any kind of inflammatory soup. So I thought, well, this, this will help. Uh, I, even though I felt okay when I was done, I was a little bit more sore, but it was more muscular soreness. I left it on for about 30 minutes. The next morning I woke up, which is Friday, I could barely walk. I mean, it was, it was so painful. My calf was so sore. I just thought, oh man, like I, I did something wrong. I didn't, I did not know. Uh, I thought, oh man, I have a stress fracture for sure. Even though, again, my ankle was not tender in any of the spots that you would particularly expect according to the Ottawa foot and ankle rules, or, or, or nor was it actually tender anywhere where I actually had pain. Um, so I went and got an x-ray, even though I know an x-ray wouldn't show it, a uh, stress fracture this close up, and I had a PA, orthopedic PA examine it. Nowhere where he palpated actually uh, was tender either. Um, and again, the strange thing, I remember my dog went to step on, he's a golden retriever and I thought, oh man, this is going to hurt, but it actually felt better with some A to P pressure. So I started resetting my ankle. Uh, and I also found that, um, that day when my calf was so sore, I thought, Hey, you know what? I'm just going to use like a massage gun and, and relax some of this tone in my calf. Cause it felt like I had done maybe a hundred calf raises after all that 30 minutes of, of low level contraction. So I got rid of the tone and the tenderness. I had several trigger points, things I, I never really take any account of. I look at Terrell and Simon's old, uh, you know, like trigger point graphs, and I notice, oh, there's like a trigger point somewhere in the posterior calf that refers exactly to where I have pain. I took the massage gun to that, and not only did that relieve my pain almost 100%, but then I thought, well... I don't have I don't have an ultrasound. I don't have a tuning fork. Uh, actually, my kids do, and I was gonna let them use it, but I was like, hey, maybe I'll try to vibrate my foot with the massage gun and see, you know, if it's if it's painful, then I'll think, oh, maybe I do have a stress fracture. I was able to use the massage gun all around the dorsum and the plantar aspect of my forefoot, around where I have pain, where I don't have pain. It didn't hurt at all. I was able to walk that day completely pain-free for, for probably the majority of the day. But then the most discouraging thing was that every morning I would wake up and I would, I would be limping again. And I thought, I would think, am I, do I have a stress fracture? Do I have a stress reaction? As the ortho PA called it, I'm not entirely sure. Again, nothing was tender. So I, I the next couple of days, I also figured out that if I do plantar flexion, and E version of the forefoot that completely modulates it, and I'm able to go the majority of the day without any pain. Um, and just to kind of 
you know, help things along. I'm also, I also decided to start taking B-complex and some turmeric for some anti-inflammatory. And, you know, it's, it's possible that dosing that with having effects similar to NSAIDs, that that also kind of helps decrease the pain sensitivity. So at this point, now it's a Monday, one week uh, after I came home and started having this severe lateral forefoot pain. And today's the first day, especially after me realizing that I can do these plantar flexion and eversion resets. I had some sustained when I was kneeling a lot yesterday in church. Uh, today's the first day that I was able to get up in the middle of the night and get up in the morning with having only two to three out of pain, 10 pain at the worst. I do notice that with um, prolonged stepping or prolonged walking that I have a little bit of discomfort. So um, at this point, again, I'm not ruling out a stress reaction, but I, I no longer think it's a stress fracture. It's, it's been kind of a crazy um, ride though, because I also noticed last last night and past couple of nights that I sleep on my left side, I have pain and paresthesia in my right lateral forefoot and, and posterior lateral, uh, like posterior to my right lateral malleolus. So I sleep on my right side, which I started doing. I also wake up feeling better. Uh, so I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on this. I know that that seems like a really long story for I went from stress fracture to not a stress fracture, back to a stress fracture, to now I think it's lumbogenic and maybe a stress reaction kind of combined with both of that. Um, let me know what you guys think or if you guys have ever heard or experienced anything like this because it's, it's, uh, it's been pretty crazy and a wild ride for me. Um, if you enjoyed this podcast, let me know what you think. Make sure to please rate Untold Physio Stories five stars wherever you listen to podcasts, especially Spotify and Apple as that helps our discoverability. And as always, you guys have a great day.